right, so welcome back to the sixth and final part in the series. Thank you so much for sticking around. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, last episode, we were working on these vocal chops here. I did go ahead and alter um, quite a bit off camera just because it's didn't want to bore you too much here. So as you can see, I did change up the pitch automation. I added a little bit of uh, grain and flux automation as well, which is going to alter the, um, the grain size and the flux timing of the sample there and we got a final a finalized part here also decided to keep the last word here so as you can hear what it says a little creepy but hey i figured why not we'll just throw it in there so what he says that's what we're gonna do and unfortunately for the last stuff here as you can tell i could not figure out a good way to show this um, while being video captured live so I just went ahead and finished up the last parts of the song off camera um, starting off with the just the bass part here and it slowly fades in with the uh, um, yellow line trick yellow line trick um, fades in as as the guitar part is playing and that's going to lead into the next part so following the bass line, I pretty much just copied over some guitar tracks. Uh, well, not copied, but I play them in exactly same, the same way. And when I do a distorted guitar like this, I like to um, stereo group them. It's the same exact thing, same exact part being played, but one left, one right, just to give it a wider image, as you can hear. And I did add a gate because... Um, you can hear it when it's a distorted guitar. You can definitely pick up some of the um, some of the noise from the background once it's um, you know when it's not playing anything. So I gated all that noise out here. For example, if I take the gate off, you're gonna hear the all that. And if you take the gate, I put the gate on. Still kind of hear it, but it's definitely less in the mix when it's all together there. So um, you heard that part in the intro. And it all leads into um, this guitar part here, which is a harmony I did using thirds. Um, right and um, all that stuff is going into another stutter edit um, the stutter edit is going to be here on the group track for the guitar uh, harmony and um, it's being backed up by um, a synth very lightly in the background um, which I actually decided to mute I didn't like it too much but I kept it there just in case and as you can tell we're doing the uh, wet to dry trick right here as a matter of fact let me name that up um, so we're doing a um, audio effect rack group with two chains, one including the stutter edit, one that does not include the stutter edit in order to do a wet to dry ratio. And I have the dry fading in as the stutters fade out um, to give it a feel like it's very affected at first and then it, the effects drop off as the song fades out. So I wanted to go for like a really glitched out feeling, you know, like um, has you know, like as the um, sample we pulled yesterday was kind of like the end of the world kind of a thing. So wanted it to feel like everything was breaking down, like literally. Um... So here we here we have our MIDI track going into the guitar harmonics group or guitar harmony group, affecting the stutter edit, and. Um, once again, just playing kind of random stuff here with the MIDI part to bring out those effects. Oh yeah, also, uh, for those that are wondering what I'm using for the guitar, um, Amplitube, once again. And I in particular like this Aldano amp, the SLO100 amp model. Um, works really good for distorted parts. Um, some of the other, some of the orange amps are really good as well. Um, 
some the angle amp is good as well you know and then you can also just use a clean amp with stomp boxes they do include some distortion stomp boxes but i find that the soldano amp just off the bat with no stomps nothing sounds really good for just distorted stuff so um if you ever want to do like some distorted guitar stuff that's a really great way to pull it out without uh, having to mic up an amplifier or direct out of anything uh, of course that's a great way to do it as well i do have an app at home and i can I do have the ability to do that but um for this song and particularly because it's already a lot of plugins and uh, electronic bass i felt that this f fit the feel a little bit better so uh, we're just going to keep it like that all right and then last but not least this really bogged down my um cpu the uh contact modern drummer great great um plug-in for drums i mean it sounds as real as you can get and uh, i just went ahead and set it to the metal setting and um threw in a few grooves altered the grooves to fit the uh the rhythm that i was doing um which you can hear in this part right here with the with the bass and distorted guitar rhythm so if i solo those up I basically just have the kick drum playing along there and uh, throughout the entire breakdown um, we have that same kick rhythm kind of playing just to add emphasis and uh, earlier on we added just a little bit more um, the the contact kit comes with great symbols so just to add emphasis you know that's what those are right there is just uh, symbols and then later on, just a small, just a small little emphasis as well um, to really bring out those symbols and and snares from the uh, kick and snare part that we had laid down earlier. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's the end of the song right there. I did want to add a, uh, some more things to it, but my computer <laughs> processor is really starting to bog down with all this information as you can tell right there it starts to jump to close to 70 percent obviously i have a crappy computer i've been saying that I, I know go get a new one bro what's wrong with you well i know it's expensive so I'm trying to save up money to get some of that stuff going and then i can really start to push this to the next level so um thanks again for sticking around i will be posting the um this is pretty much this is just the composition um stage of everything it's pretty much unmixed at this point i mean it sounds decent enough to to put out and i will be releasing um a youtube track for everybody to hear and in, in, as a supplementary material um in the series and um later on uh, i'm not sure if i'll be doing a tutorial or actually just taking it to a mixing house but later on we'll have it mixed and mastered and released properly but for now um i will have the unmixed composition version available for free on our youtube channel so check that out um and also I had a few people, um, a few criticisms online from posting this. A lot of people in their, uh, when you start mentioning alternate tunings, <laughs> a lot of people get really like, Ugh, well, this tuning is better and 432 hertz and you should use scientific 256 and this and that. And I, you know, I get it. I do. But the point of this song was not to um, tell you what to tune to, not to um, tell you to go change your tuning. It's just literally, if you look at the videos I've been posting, um, I found a really weird coincidence with the magic square of the sun that every, if you add up every row column and diagonal you get 111 and so i was thinking well wait that's kind of weird because if you tune to 111 222 um that's really similar to the tuning that we're already using you know most you know we're using 440 tuning and that breaks down to 220 and 110 so i was like wait a minute 111 222 that's very interesting so I'm not telling anybody to go tune to something different. That's not what this is about. This is just a creative exploration, a creative experiment to see what would happen if we use this uh, this number system, which is revealed in the Magic Square of the Sun. And so um, in addition to releasing the song, I will also be putting out a um, another video that kind of goes more into depth as to why I made these choices and why I decided to do what I did in these, you know, from a, a kind of like... Um, I guess like a, a philosophical point of view, like what's with 
what's with uh, all the choices I made here? Why did I take so much time doing little stupid things like, you know, uh, adding the monk coder or the fractal time? And so I'm going to make a supplementary video, um, non-tutorial. It's just an informational video about why um, these decisions were made. And so keep an eye out for that. Once again, thank you all so much for uh, sticking around. Sorry I couldn't do this last portion of the video um, live on the video capture, you know, as you can tell, the computer that I'm using is just, it's its not <laughs> not made for this kind of stuff. But I tried anyways. Um, hopefully, you all can see that and, and appreciate the efforts. And um, we'll, we'll be coming out with a lot more content in the future. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, oh, yeah, last thing, but not, you know, last but not least, uh, I added a little bit of a groove to everything. Because if you keep everything entirely quantized the whole time, it's going to sound very robotic. And I didn't want to do that. So I added a groove. Um which is, if you don't do this in your tracks, this is a really great way to make them come alive. Um, Ableton includes a nice little chunk of grooves that you can use. You can create your own or you can use the, the built-in factory ones. And I just threw one in there and I, I put it on every single rhythmic um, element of the song. And it really, it definitely lives it up, especially with these drums here at the end. It really livens it up, kind of gives you like a shuffle swing, which takes it out of the quantized, the hard quantized feel, makes it feel less robotic and more humanized. And uh, so I added that a little bit. And uh, as you can see, I'm still doing the repeating digits. This guy and his freaking repeating digits. So that was the last little thing. And um, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, and uh, thank you so much. Love you guys.